And the Egyptian embraces his brother from the Brotherhood of the Shamans in San Francisco. Yeah, warmly, deeply, and uh, whispers back. Very cool. Oh, Bluebird, this is our new friend Biozone. He's buying our final, I hope, uh, hashish smuggling trip of assassin from Chitral for 1969. Uh, Bluebeard uh, observes carefully Biozone and asks him, uh, "Hey man, you look, you look kind of pale. You've been living in a cave or what?" <laughs> well, this joke. Causes everybody to laugh and to lighten up. You know, it's kind of a serious moment here. Uh, Sphinx chuckles. Um, kindly prepare the magus of the catacombs. A chillum of assassin? Hashish only. By his own. Well, he's been a connoisseur of hashish. Long time. I mean, he smoked it. You know, in all the hippie scenes in London, Crete, and in prisons also. He scrapes his uh, little fingernail along the uh, a sample block of assassin, uh, tiny shaving under his nail, and he tastes it. That's all he needs to do. Doesn't even need to smoke it. And hesitates. And then laughs. Exquisite material, bro. Well, the two kingpins of global hashish share the chillum together. They pause to save the uh, aroma. An amazing taste of this rare connoisseur hashish. Secluded beach mm -hmm. in southern Crete. Mm -hmm. They become intensely high. Mm-hmm. Ecstatic about the quality, Bison removes a brick of U.S. $100 bills from his day pack. He casually hands, like, here, $240,000 to the Egyptian, who does not count it. Biozone comes guaranteed. You would know what that means if you were uh, an outlaw. <laughs> you don't have to worry about anything. Biozone comes guaranteed. Let's just leave it there. And Sphinx raises his eyebrows. Well, more meaningfully than that, uh, to, uh, the prompt for Bluebeard to uncover. He just takes the tarp off. Uh, what's in the dinghy, and that's that's it. That's the cargo. That's the 400 kilograms. And he he takes it out of the boat. I mean, he's buffed up, pretending to be a Greek god, onto the shoreline. Well, hallucinating, a biozone uh, mumbles, dolphins offshore. Well, he's still too sown to see straight, not quite yet. Um, this is the strongest hashish he's ever smoked. Uh-huh. Well, and this is saying some come from him, huh? Uh, Kingpin's illusions of grandeur after that chillum? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Biazone bows in the general direction, kind of, towards... Bluebeard and the dinghy whispering to himself, Assassin is like an acid trip. Jeez. Uh, he is so ecstatic to have fallen in to this ultimate hashish connection, global connection. Well, then, look, these are professional dealers. And so when buy a zone, Suggest gently that uh, uh, Sphinx discreetly disappear uh, because three of his strongest crypt slaves are bringing three mules uh, uh, at 10. It's already 940 and he's kind of losing track of time on all the, all the drugs. 
And they're going to transport the assassin back to, well, he knows all the micro recesses, inaccessible. Like I say, you got to crawl in backwards. You have a big butt you can't get in at all. Labyrinth. <sighs> oh. mm. Sphinx understands. He hands Bluebird $40,000 for his sailing expertise, his smuggling skills, and his faithfulness. Bluebird and Sphinx, they go back a long way to the hate Ashbury. Summer of Love. Allen Ginsberg with the little symbols and chanting. And, uh, Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Sphinx keeps uh, 40000 for himself, too. I mean, it's for, it's for his private fun and travel uh, money. And he then, the last chunk, $160,000, he sorts this all out in his cave later, not right now, but in his imagination, uh, that's for the... Uh, uh, Brotherhood of the Shaman, San Francisco World Headquarters, uh, LSD Laboratory Research Fund. And so, uh, Sphinx and Biozone. Namaste. Hey, how cool was what we just did? Uh, yeah, and... Um, Stone world of his own, yes. Uh, Sphinx smiles enigmatically. You can't mind wrap this dude. Uh, as he pushes Bluebeard off shore and out to sea. It's warm in Hawaii early too. Oops, did I say? We'll edit that out in post-production. I'm in hiding. You don't need to know why. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's going to stash uh, his briefcase. It, it's it's mafia grade for the short airplane trip to Turkey. And uh, Okay. The passage of time. <laughs> Sphinx walks towards Matala. He's got to meet his chick at Yorgos. Cafeneon. Paracalo. Yeah. Walks along the goat path, rocky Cretan coastline, until he emerges on the plateau above the catacombs of Matala, Chillum City. Yeah, he's got a good view. He's at the opposite end of the beach from the cave, so he can look at it from a distance. And what? The full moon party... Still going? Oh, to be young and a heavy in the 60s, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh. Just catch that wave and surf it all the way to India. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay, I'm scanning the cave.